Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Ring recently announced that they now have integration with Z-Wave smart locks from different major manufacturers like Gale, Schlage, and Quickset. I'll link below the compatibility page where Ring will continue to update when more models and other brands that have smart Z-Wave technology will be compatible. Please note that you need to have the Ring alarm at this time to be able to control your Z-Wave compatible locks. By the way, Z-Wave technology is a wireless protocol that focuses mostly in connectivity with smart home products. It doesn't use a lot of power like Wi-Fi and has a bigger range than Bluetooth. It uses a lower radio frequency range of 800 to 900 megahertz. So for now, you will need the ring alarm, specifically the base station, which is the one responsible and acts as a hub to control the locks and also the alarm sensors using Z-Wave technology. Also for now, accessing the door lock in the app is a bit of a hassle because it is buried deep in the app, which I'll show you later on. Ring stated that in the future, you will just need a Ring device like their doorbell or any of their security cameras, and you will be able to control the lock via the app, and even during two-way communication. By the way, if you haven't seen it yet, I also did a review of the Nest X Yale lock which I will link in the description down below. And if you have tried out the Nest X Yale lock, you will be disappointed with the Ring. It is pretty basic at this time and is still missing a lot of features. Ring stated though that there will be more updates on this pretty soon. A benefit though is that Ring is compatible with different brands and models of locks that uses Z-Wave technology. So you will have choices, especially the prices. To try this feature out, I purchased the least expensive Z-Wave lock that I can find. I bought the Yale B1L110 which I'll link down below. And this is also in the compatible list with Ring. I'll be installing this lock in my back door and it is pretty easy if it will just be a replacement for your existing deadbolt. Also guys, you have to make sure that your door is aligned properly and there are no snagging when you lock and unlock your deadbolt. I have to tighten up the hinge screws and readjust my back door a bit because my current deadbolt catches and needs a bit of muscle to lock and unlock it. So my first tip is even before thinking of buying a smart lock, make sure your door is aligned and that there's no snagging on your current deadbolt. If this is a new install, the lock will come with a template so you can cut the holes properly. My second tip, just like with the Nest X Yale lock install, when prepping your door and tightening the hinge screws, check to see how long the hinge screws are. If they are the standard 1 inch screws, it is high time to replace it with longer 3 inch screws, making your door more secure and less likely to lose alignment. Let's do a quick unboxing. We have the paperwork, a new install template, we have the installation and programming guide, advertising flyer, we have the keypad outside lock with backlit keys, we have the inside part of the lock, we have the deadbolt unit. We have the strike plate, screws and machine screws. Then we have four AA batteries. Alright, with that out of the way, let's install the lock and set it up. Let's remove the old deadbolt which you need to unscrew the inside lock first which will also loosen the outside part of the lock. Then unscrew and remove the old deadbolt. We will now install and screw in our new deadbolt. Slide in and position the outside lock and secure it by screwing in the mounting plate on the inside and making sure that the wiring goes through the door hole and also is positioned properly on the slot in the mounting plate. Then we will install the inside lock and we will need to plug in the connector making sure the white marking is facing up. Then we will screw in the inside lock using the included machine screws. Test the deadbolt manually first making sure everything is installed correctly and doesn't rub on the strike plate. Time to install the batteries and we will program the lock. The first thing that we need to do is to create a master pin code. By the way, with this type of lock, programming it through the keypad is tedious especially if you want to add user codes. 
But with the Ring integration later on, you'll be able to easily add users and their access codes using the Ring app. We'll make sure first that the lock works using our master PIN code. This is set up so that you will lock with a touch of any button and to unlock, type in your PIN code followed by the check mark. Time to set up the Ring Alarm to integrate with the lock. So on the Ring app, click Setup Device, click Security Devices, scroll down and you will see and click on Locks. You will be given a list of brands and models of locks that are compatible and just scroll down and find the lock that you have. In my case, I have the Yale 110. You need to open up the battery cover to set this up. Click Ready to continue. Tap the Add button on the app and then press and hold the side button on the lock until you hear two beeps. The app will then configure the device and wait for it to be installed successfully. Then click Done. You then need to configure the device. Click on the Yale lock and in here you can change the name of the device which I'll change mine to Backdoor. Click Save. Then you can also assign a room for the lock, which I'll choose living room in mine. Then click save, click done to exit. Now you will see if you go to the main dashboard, there are no icons or anything that will let you control the lock. Ring kinda forgot about this one and I'm pretty sure they will be updating the app so as to have a user interface for the lock. You can see on the top, there are my alarm controls and I think this is the perfect spot to put an icon to lock or unlock your door or doors. The control for the door is buried down in the devices list. So you go to the main menu on the upper left corner of the app, click devices, scroll down to click on the alarm base station, and scroll down again to get to the locks option, which in my case, I named it back door. And you will see the only option for now for the locks are the battery level, a toggle switch to lock and unlock the door, and event history. If you click on the gear icon on the upper right corner, you will get into the settings where you can change the name and the room of the device. On the advanced options, you can remove failed or reconfigure the device. Going back, there is also the event history where it will show you when the door was locked or unlocked and also anytime there is a change in the status of the lock, like when the settings were edited. Now, to lock or unlock the door, you just need to toggle the switch. As you can see in the event history, it will show that we just unlock and lock back the door. It will also show if you or somebody manually locks and unlocks it. Now, the integration of the lock doesn't stop and just be able to lock and unlock the door. You can also add users and give them passcodes that will work with the lock and also with the alarm. To do this, go to the side menu on the app and click on settings. This is the settings if you have the ring alarm. Click users and you will see the owner, shared, and guest users if there are any. Click add user and you can choose which type of user you are going to add. A shared user is that you will be sharing your ring devices like the alarm or one or all of your ring cameras. They need to set up an account with ring and download the app. You will need their email address and you can choose which Ring device you will need them to have access to. If you give them access to the alarm, you will need to create a 4-digit passcode. Click Done and send the invite in which it will be emailed to them.
and on the users page you will now see the person as a shared user and you can edit or delete their access at any time with a shared user you will have an account with ring and you'll be able to see the shared devices on the app like the cameras and also arm or disarm the alarm and also lock and unlock the door via the app the guest user on the other hand doesn't need a ring account you just need to create a passcode that the person can use to type into the keypad of the alarm to disarm the system and also the same passcode to open the door if you have an integrated lock. They don't have to have an account with Ring or have the app. This is good for people that you want to give access to the house temporarily without giving them your keys like dog walkers or housekeepers. Add a name to the guest user which this is for the dog sitter for example and choose which devices you need them to have access to, which will also need them to be able to open the back door. Click Create Access Code and you type in a four-digit passcode. Click Done and Save. And now we have added it to the guest users list. Now let's test it out. Whenever you remove the user, it will also remove the access code to the devices like the alarm and the door instantly. So what do you think guys? The lock integration is just on the infancy stage and Ring has a lot more updates that will be pushed in the coming months. What I want and probably most of you will want is to have lock controls to be in the main user interface and also be added and will be an option whenever you are viewing or talking to one of Ring cameras, especially their doorbell. I also want some push notification whenever the door is unlocked or locked. Talking about Ring updates, I'll show you guys the email that Ring has sent out a few weeks ago. There are a lot of new updates coming. First and most of you will have this update already is the camera previews. The home screen is updated with recent images from your cameras. To turn this on, you need to open the side menu and click on the new features. And you can turn on or off the camera previews. Next is the timeline which Ring Protect customers can view their history of Ring events on a color-coded timeline. You can swipe back and forth to select the footage that you want to see. Then we have the smart alerts for battery powered doorbells and cameras, which as you all know uses PIR motion sensor. It detects heat and is hard to set the sensitivity range and most of you will either get a lot of false alerts or no recordings at all. With smart alerts, the PIR sensor will get triggered but before starting to record and send a notification, the camera will verify first if the motion is human or if it is within the customized zones that you set. Also, if the motion stops, then the recording will stop. Now, I have to test this out and see how Ring will implement this without having a sort of a delay. The PIR motion sensing themselves is usually late to pick up and start recording. And if you add this AI component, then it might cause further delays of the recording. We will see. Then the 24-7 recording, which I know a lot of you have been waiting for. This feature will hurt Nest big time because this is the feature that they are known for and one of the top reasons why people buy Nest cameras. This is an additional fee on top of the Protect plan that you're subscribed to. Personally, I don't like 24-7 recording on cameras that uploads to the cloud. And the reason is that it will use a lot of bandwidth. Just imagine if you have 10 cameras streaming continuously and add your Netflix and online gaming and this will definitely slow down your internet even if you have the best and the greatest Wi-Fi and router equipment. Also, your internet provider will frown on you and they will eventually cap your bandwidth usage and probably throttle your internet speed, especially in peak hours. If you want 24-7 recording, you will be better off with an NVR camera system. 
It records uncompressed video footage on a hard drive, and it will not use and waste your internet bandwidth. I do like the frames or snapshots options throughout the day though. Another update will be audible announcements, where you can set your cameras to automatically play a message that they are being monitored by Ring. Camera Preview Control, which the thumbnail of your camera will be in live view when motion is detected. So you really don't have to click and open up the camera. By the way, the thumbnails load much quicker too. Then we have the timestamps. This feature is long overdue and needs to be in all security cameras. I don't know why Ring just added it. So there are more updates to come with Ring in 2019. That's it guys and thanks for watching. And hopefully you like this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to get update videos like this video, tech product reviews, comparison videos, and long-term reviews. Thank you.